Okay, so last time we talked about um, temperature dependence of rate constants and reaction coordinate diagrams and the Arrhenius equation. Um, so there's a little bit more of a wrinkle to this that I kind of alluded to last class, which was that if you have your reaction coordinate diagram and energy, and I'm just going to draw some you know, arbitrary diagram, let's say here, again here to go here. Uh, if we go, let's say, something like that, so again, a two-step process. So we have two transition states, one intermediate. Uh, the higher hump is our barrier. And again, again, so this is, like I said last time, is more properly called delta G double dagger. So this is the free energy of our rate determining steps transition state. Um, so the, this is, uh, again, different than our EA activation energy, which was just uh, fitted from that um, exponential plot. Um, so this was kind of discussed in the early 1900s. So this concept of delta G double dagger as opposed to our normal delta G. Again, delta G double dagger is a kinetic parameter. Delta G is a thermodynamic parameter. So don't get those mixed up. But if this is a free energy term, what this means is that we can then think about a free, our, our enthalpy of activation, delta H double dagger, and then our entropy of activation, T delta S double dagger. So these are kind of the enthalpy of getting to this transition state. So transition state. And then this delta S double dagger is the entropic term of getting to that transition state also. So what these tell us, they can tell us key information about our transition, the nature of our transition state. So this is uh, somewhat more useful than just getting an EA value out um, in terms of when you're trying to think about mechanism when you're doing kinetic experiments. Um, so overall, the iron plot is similar to, um, sorry, the iron equation is similar to the Rennes equation in the, in the sense that we're relating our rate constant to uh, this delta G double dagger. Um, so the equation is, let me see if I write it out. It's, again, we're relating rate constant. So rate constant. And then this equals some kappa term. We kind of don't just ignore this for now. Um, and then we have, this is the Boltzmann constant. Um, and then in this case, this uh, coefficient is temperature dependent. So temperature over the plot constant. And then we have another exponential, so e to the negative delta G double dagger over RT. Um, so this term, we won't go into how you derived it, but it, this has come from tra so-called transition state theory. So what Iring did, so this is the Iring equation. What I mean to is he considered the nature of this transition state in terms of what molecules between the reactant and the products were. And then he uh, did some probability calculations, and then he was able to back out this term. Um, so this is kind of a little bit too far advanced for our class, so we won't discuss it. But suffice it to say that once you have this equation, so you don't, you don't memorize this equation, but if we were to do the same linearization, if we take the log of k, um, rather than getting an uh, equation in terms of log of k, we can then plot log of k over t. And then so this equals, let me write this down to be short, negative delta h double dagger over r times 1 over t uh, plus log of kb over h. So again, these are constants. So the Boltzmann constant is a constant. Here's Planck's constant. And then we also get out delta S double dagger over R. So again, this is a linearized term. So you can see this is our intercept. Intercept. And then negative delta H dagger, double dagger over R is our slope. So what this means is that delta H double dagger is going to be, uh, delta H double dagger is kind of about our activation energy from the Arrhenius equation. So. What this means is that if uh, so this is technically only applicable if kappa equals 1. So if kappa equals 1, a single step 
reaction. We could then linearize it, and then we'll just, what we'll do is, oh shoot, my marker is dying. Okay, let's try this one. Okay. So we'll plot, like the Arrhenius plot, we'll plot the x-axis as 1 over t, so we'll have multiple temperatures that we're doing our kinetics experiment at, and then we'll have our multiple rate constants, but this time we plot log k over t, and then what we'll do is we'll still get out some line uh, from our multiple points that are, we've been you know, running our experiments at. And then this slope is going to be equals negative delta h double dagger over r. And then this intercept is going to be this guy. So this will be log kb over h plus delta s double dagger over r. Um, so this is more useful than having the activation energy because what this means is that if you think about what the entropic term must mean, so let's think about delta S double dagger. If this is greater than zero, um, entropy is increasing. Um, and then so that means our transistor state uh, might not be, is, is less ordered than our starting material. Um, on the contrast, if delta S double dagger is less than zero, that means it's more ordered, right? We've lost entropy. So what this means is that uh, if you think about having, let's say, an SN2 mechanism where you have a bimolecular thing, they have to, again, the molecules have to arrange in a very specific orientation for the reaction to occur. So for that kind of associative mechanism, you might expect the entropy of activation to be less than zero. Typically, although these delta S double daggers that you get from the iron plots are actually quite small in magnitude, so sometimes they're not considered uh, very trustworthy. So typically, you kind of want delta S double dagger to be greater than 10, uh, let me make sure I get my units right, 10 cal per mole Kelvin. Um, so sorry, this is not in joules. But if, this is, if this, the magnitude of this is greater than that, then you have a trustworthy delta S double dagger that is, gives you a good amount of information about the nature of our transition state. So you can then figure out whether you have an associative or dissociative mechanism. So this might be more consistent with dissociative, like an SN1, for example, where your transition state is something that's kind of falling apart. So that might be uh, entropy increases. Great.